All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about adaptive thresholding in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll see how we go from this image on the left to this image here on the right. So what is adaptive thresholding? Uh, it's a thresholding technique that finds a threshold value based on a local region. So uh, as before, where we talk about just plain thresholding, we looked at a threshold value that's a global value, so it applied to the whole image. For adaptive one, we're looking at a local region. Okay. So why do we need adaptive thresholding? So sometimes a picture may have uneven lighting. So you may want to have the threshold value adjust based on the different parts of the image. You could have varying contrast, maybe perhaps due to certain um, lighting conditions as well. Um, you may want to use it to obtain an outline of an image or maybe segment parts of the image. There could be various applications. Okay, So how does adaptive thresholding work? So the way it works is it breaks up the image into sections. And then for each section, it'll find a threshold value. And then for that section, it's going to apply a threshold value. Um, and then there's going to be some offset C that we'll be applying, as you'll see in our coding example. And there's going to be typically two methods. You have the mean adaptive and the Gaussian um, adaptive. So what that just means is you're going to be doing the mean versus the Gaussian. It's pretty similar to the filter concepts that we talked about. OK, so that's pretty much the idea. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the coding. OK, so as usual, we're going to go ahead and import some of our libraries. OK, so. The main libraries we're going to need is go ahead and import cv2 as cv, and then import numpy as mp, and then import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then import import os. OK, so let's go ahead and make our function. We're going to call it um, adaptive uh, thresholding. And then we have our if name equals main. OK, so in here, we're going to pass in our root equals os.get cwd. And then we have our image path. It's going to be os.path.join. And then we're going to pass in root. And we have our demo images. And our image is called tessa.jpg. OK, so actually, this should go in here. And here we're calling our adaptive thresholding. Okay, so let's go ahead and read in our image. So image gray, and then I'm gonna do cv dot um, read, and we're gonna pass in our image path. And here I'm gonna do the I'm um, read uh, grayscale. Okay, so that's our grayscale image, and let's go ahead and plot plot the image to see what we're dealing with. So plt.figure. And then we have plt.subplot. And then we're going to do 141 here. And we'll do plt.show. And we're going to have our gray image. And we're going to do cmap gray. OK, so again, for binary images, we typically deal with grayscale. So I'm going to title this plt.title, and then just call it gray. OK, so I'll do a plt.show. We go ahead and see the picture, picture we're working with. OK, so that's the picture we're dealing with today. And then now let's go ahead and plot some of our uh, results with our thresholding. So let's go ahead and make a new subplot. Call this uh, 1, 4, 3 here. Or actually, let's, let's do some of the initial one first. So let's let's take a look at our previous like plain plain uh global thresholding, right? So we're gonna do image threshold and we have cv dot threshold, right? And then we're gonna pass in our image, which is our grayscale, and then the value we used last time was 70 and then 255. And then we're gonna just do cv um thresh binary. That's gonna be the option that we're gonna do. And we do plt dot um show here. Um, pass in our threshold image. And then again, CMAP is going to be gray. So this one here is our global, call it global uh, thresh. 
So let's see how that looks like for, we'll just have it here for a comparison, right? So this is our global thresholding. So let's see how the other thresholding methods um, look like. So let's do plt dot uh, subplot here. And then here we have one, four, three. So we have our max value that we set at 255. We have a block size. This is like the, the area that we're looking at. So it's going to be a seven uh, pixel size. And the height and width is a square. And we have an offset C that we set to be two. So if we go ahead and do the mean method. So we have CV dot, the function is called adaptive thresholding. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and pass in your grayscale image. You have your max value, um, and then you have your method here. So CV dot adaptive, and then you have your adaptive mean C. And then here you have your threshold type. We're gonna do the CV dot thresh. Um, you're going to do a typical binary one, and then we pass in the block size. And then lastly, we're going to do our offset C. Okay, so this is our mean method, and then we have plt.amshow img mean. And I'm going to do the C map equals gray again. And then we do plt.title, and let's take a look at our mean thresh. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and run this, take a look. So this here is our mean thresholding. And then if I go ahead and essentially um, do the same thing, the only difference now is we're gonna use the Gaussian method. So here we're gonna do adaptive and then we have our Gaussian. So here instead of mean, we're gonna rename this to uh, Gauss. So if I change this three to a four, we should see our option. But this we defined already, so I'm gonna delete that. And if I go ahead and run this, we should see our Gauss um, thresholding. So some parts of it, uh, you could take a look at where you see the difference. Um, one part that I noticed is if you zoom into the ground uh, for the Gauss, might be a little bit smoother, right? Um, it's kind of subtle, but here really you can see the two, they look pretty similar, but in certain applications, if you need more smoothing, um, you might want to kind of play around and see which one gives you better results. Okay, so let's zoom in here and see how that looks like. Okay, so you can see subtle difference, not a whole lot. Some of these lines here are a little bit more obvious. Um, whereas here is kind of just a tad bit more smoothed out. Um, so it's going to be case by case, right? So again, with image processing, it's an art. Best way is to play around with the values and see what works best for your application. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.